This video tutorial is on balancing chemical equations, but before we start, we need to first know how to count atoms. So the first rule on counting atoms is that anytime you see one symbol, it represents one atom of that element. So for instance, an Na is one atom of sodium. One Cl is just one atom of chlorine. Now, the number in the front underneath over here is called a subscript. Just like a subway or a submarine, it means underneath, while subscript, underneath. A subscript next to an element indicates how many of those elements are present. So for instance, this 2 next to the H indicates that there are two atoms of hydrogen. Over here, Mg, there is no number, so we assume that it's just a 1. So we say that there's one atom of magnesium, and since there's a 2 here, two atoms of chlorine. Sometimes you'll see a subscript outside the bracket. What that means is it multiplies everything inside the bracket. So for instance over here we have three magnesium atoms, but we have two of these phosphate ions over here. So by saying 2PO4 I'm saying that I have a phosphate ion here and another phosphate ion here. Because I have two of them. And each of these phosphate ions is attached to three magnesiums altogether. So I'm not exactly showing how it's bonded, but that should be good enough. So let's pretend that's how they bond. All right, so for every three magnesiums, I have two phosphates. Now a phosphate ion would look something like this, where there would be oxygens surrounding the phosphate ion. So each one of these looks like this, and there'd be another one on this side. Now, the other number that you'll see is called a coefficient, and it usually goes in front of the compound or molecule formula. So a coefficient indicates how many compounds you have and multiplies all elements in the compound. So for instance, this means that I have three PBNO32s, so three lead nitrates, lead 2 nitrates. So it would be like writing PBNO32 once, PBNO32 twice, and PBNO3 three times. But instead of doing that, we just write a 3 in the front to show that we have 3 of these PBNO32s. Now here's how I recommend you calculate them. Uh, ignore the 3, pretend it doesn't exist. And just calculate how many atoms of each type are inside one of these compounds. So, PB means there's one atom of PB in each of these. Over here, because there's two NO32s, so that I have two of these packages over here which means I have two nitrogens altogether, and two times one is two. Two times three is six, so I should have six oxygens for each lead nitrate. However, how many lead nitrates do I have? Th uh, three. And so I multiply everything by three. All right, so three times one is three, three times two is six, three times six is 18, and there we have it, we have three. Uh, if I had three of these lead nitrates, let's double check, do I have three leads? One, two, three. Yes, I do. Do I have six nitrogens? Well, let's take a look at it. Two times one is two. Two times one is two. Two times one is two. So it's two, four, six nitrogens. And do I have 18 oxygens? Two times three is six. Two times three is six. Two times three is six. So six, 12, 18. Now, a common problem most students have is uh, what is the difference between a coefficient and a subscript? They usually mix that one up. So yes, it seems like there are two H's and two O's, that is true, just like this is two H's and two O's. But what is the difference exactly between H2O2 and a 2HO? This over here hopefully will illustrate the difference. By saying 2HO, I'm saying I have two molecules of HO. By saying H2O2, I am assuming that there's a 1 in front, and I have one of these molecules of HOOH. Two H's, two O's, bonded all together in one giant molecule, versus two HO, meaning I have an HO here and an HO here, but I have two of them. Uh, to help illustrate this further, and to drive it home, it's like saying I've got two Big Macs. All right, here's a Big Mac, and here's another Big Mac, two of them. This, on the other hand, even though it has the same number of buns and same number of patties, this, this is, I don't know, this is like a McHeart attack. 
All right. So yes, the individual number of atoms is identical. So there are two H's and two O's, two H's, two O's. But how they're assembled is different. Same thing, same number of buns, same number of patties, but how they are assembled is different. This is the recipe itself. And the coefficient just tells you how many servings should I create. All right, so now that we have the basics, let's start uh, balancing equations. Normally, balancing equations is done by inspection. Uh, inspection is essentially a fancy word for trial and error. However, there are some guidelines you can follow in order to help you out. So for instance, the number one guideline that we, I usually follow anyway is to balance the hydrogens and the oxygens last. So what I like to do is I like to set up my T-chart, so reactants on one side, products on the other, and I write down what elements are involved. So I have nitrogens, I've got oxygens, and I've got hydrogens, and another oxygen, but that's going to be kept over here. So under products, I should have nitrogens as well, oxygens, and hydrogens. Then I need to set up how many of each do I have initially. So on this side, the reactant side, I do have two. So I'll write down two. How many oxygens do I have? Six over here. So I'll write six. How many hydrogens? Two. Over here, how many uh, nitrogens do I have? I've got one. How many oxygens? I've got three. And how many hydrogens? One. Now remember, you cannot play around with the subscripts. You cannot change these around. By changing these around, you are basically uh, set, making a new compound, and you might create something that's very, very unstable. All right. So once it's set up, once the actual subscripts are already set up, you cannot change them anymore. They follow the zero-sum rule. The only thing you can change is coefficients. That's the only thing you're allowed to play with while you're balancing the equation. If you do start changing this, then your substance does not exist anymore. You have changed it, it does not follow the zero-sum rule. You're balancing something that doesn't exist. And if you're balancing something that doesn't exist, your marks don't exist. So to remind myself that I'm only touching the coefficients, I usually put a line in the front just to remind myself that I only get to play around with these numbers and not these numbers. All right, so let's start it off. I have two nitrogen on this side, and I've got one nitrogen on this side. Since I cannot reduce this number, I can only go up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a 2 in front of here. By putting this coefficient 2, I'm telling myself that I have two of these nitric acids, which means the numbers that I originally counted are all wrong now, so I have to recalculate my numbers. So how many n's do I have now? 2 times 1, 2. So what I like to do is I usually like to cross it out and replace it with a new number. I don't like to erase because it's a waste of time, but I also like to see what was I doing before. It's like a little history page that allows me to see what I was doing before. All right, now how many oxygens? Two times three is six. So cross that out, six. Notice how I'm not scribbling it out, so I can still read what numbers I used before. And how many hydrogens now? I've got two. Cross that out, two. And, oh, look at that. That was pretty easy to do. Uh, everything's balanced, so my nitrogens are balanced, 2 and 2. My oxygens are balanced, 6 and 6. And my hydrogens are balanced, 2 and 2. So if I remove any of my rough work, my final answer should be, whoops, right there. I don't need to put a 1 in the front because it's assumed that it's one compound over there anyway. And I have a 2 HNO3.